Thank you, honourable members. And I now call upon the Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Climate Change, Environment, Civil Service, Information, Public Enterprises, and Veteran Affairs, the Honourable City Vene Rabuka, to take the floor. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to uh, contribute to the debate on the 2023-24 uh, budget delivered by the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance on Friday the 30th of June, 2023. I welcome our citizens who are following these uh, proceedings via television, radio, or live streaming. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'd like to uh, pay tribute to uh, the late Taufa uh, Bagatale, who was the Deputy Prime Minister during uh, the SVT, uh, GBP, the government, and also the late Ratalemo, uh, Ratakele, a former uh, late senator, and also a late member of the Great Council of Chiefs during their lifetime. I thank the people of, uh, of uh, Taruni for uh, receiving the, the squad, our Fiji Rugby World Cup squad that uh, was training in uh, Walangi Village uh, last week, and it was uh, great to have been able to visit them. I also uh, would like to commend the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister and his team for uh, quickly putting together uh, this budget that we are debating in this Honorable House, <coughs> aimed at uh, stabilizing the situation that we inherited and moving Fiji forward. We all understand that it's the uh, will and the wish of everyone elected into this August House. I believe, Mr. Speaker, sir, that uh, it will be the foundation for the consolidation of government finances to support the socio-economic development and restructuring in the short and middle term, medium term. The proposed budget has received uh, quite uh, broad support and acceptance, gauging from the uh, views expressed to the team that have gone around the country uh, in uh, consultation before and after the presentation of the budget. The uh, encouraging thing, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that they've been forthright and they have freely expressed themselves uh, and their views on the, the budget that before us. Non-government, professional institutions, and the private sector on the whole have commended the budget, Mr. Speaker, sir. I thank those who have endorsed the budget in the media and in discussions that we have had around the country. There will be criticisms there will be political rhetoric, and it is the duty of the honorable members of the opposition to uh, try and uh, not criticize, but see how best we can better the presentation by government and allocations. We will continue to encourage constructive criticisms that is genuine in the hope that we can all work together for the benefit of our people and the nation. I will be discussing with my, with my colleagues the best way of introducing an organized feedback system that gives the public an avenue for letting us know directly what they think about our services and our policies. When I say our, I mean the government. And policies. 
The question such as uh, how efficient are our departments? How can they improve? How much of a difference did the new bridge that was recently opened in the area uh, make to the livelihood and the lives of the people in the area? What do they think of the local medical services? How well do the Water Authority of Fiji and the Energy of Fiji communicate over water and power cuts? Are the announcements uh, realistic and the duration of the cuts accurate? They can come back on that network and tell the government about those. Do the government uh, agencies do a good job in answering the questions from the consumers? But I uh, also issue a cautionary note, Mr. Speaker, sir, on the budget, which is a product of consultations and dialogue among different stakeholders right around the country. No government anywhere, Mr. Speaker, sir, is capable of preparing a budget that gives their people everything that they want. Because our resources are scarce and limited, and government has to prioritize based on the current needs. This budget, Mr. Speaker, sir, is meant to help us out of a crisis we knew we would have to, con to contend with when we came into the elections and eventually got uh, the parliamentary vote to be government. It is caused by unsustainable debt levels, some of which we couldn't avoid, and the shocking deterioration of much of our infrastructure, in particular our health facilities, Mr. Speaker. These are some of, uh, these are some of the grim realities that the budget is designed to deal with. The budget has been designed to immediately help as many of the poor and needy as possible and give, give relief to students burdened with tough debts. It is also intended to improve education and boost investor confidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, in, the, in my State of the Nation address on the eve of the budget announcement, in fact, it was on uh, Wednesday, the 28th of June, I reiterated that it is critical that we must all come together to address the common challenges in rebuilding our nation. There is no doubt that we have to make some hard decisions that will not be pleasant nor easy for some of our own people. These decisions are deemed necessary for the common good of our citizens and to take our country forward. I made it very clear, Mr. Speaker, sir, that we are operating in an uncertain and unpredictable global environment. There is therefore a need, and it's very important, that we have to make necessary changes to protect our nation from uncertainty that we face today and possible future shocks. Structural adjustment policies to improve efficiency, Mr. Speaker, sir, and productivity are necessary in order for us to be relevant, adaptable, and to be competitive in the global environment we're in. Therefore, despite the increase in expenditure, the budget is intended to consolidate government finances in the medium term. Our deficit has been brought down to 4.8% compared to 7.4% in the 22-23 financial year. Despite the reduction, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the deficit, compared to the last three years, more work is necessary to further reduce our deficit to a desirable level of at least, or to be below 4% of our GDP. Mr. Speaker, sir, the budget includes measures to address the high debt level, minimize wastage, direct resources to priority areas and sectors of government, and allow our people access 
to basic services. Our current debt uh, portfolio, Mr. Speaker, sir, is uh, around 10 billion. This means that with our current commitment, we have to pay over $1 billion to service our debt annually. That comprises $536 million in interest alone and $516 million in principal to be repaid annually. This simply means that we do not have the fiscal space. In other words, Mr. Speaker, sir, there is no room or very lim limited capacity for government to expedite and implement capital projects that are critical for investment to generate employment opportunities for our people. On revenue measures, Mr. Speaker, sir, we have made some hard decisions to have a balanced uh, budget. Sorry. In addition, we've been talking about that every day. So, uh, we have uh, made some very hard decisions to have a balanced budget. In addition to the 21 zero-rated bet on basic food items, Mr. Speaker, sir, prescription medicine is now also exempted. The, VA, the VAT rate of 15% will apply to all other goods and services, while PAYE has been adjusted downwards. Import duty on raw materials has been increased by 3%. <coughs> the corporate tax rate has increased from 20 to 25%. A few other important duties, Mr. Speaker, sir, have been increased by 5%. <laughs> Duty concessions on fuel for tourism and shipping have been removed. Other duty and tax concessions have also been adjusted to improve revenue collection. The government is also implementing measures to improve tax administration and minimize tax evasion. The revenue policy reforms are guided by the principles of fairness, simplicity with businesses and tax uh, fairness, simplicity, and revenue adequacy. Mr. Speaker, sir, we are committed to transparency and genuine consultation with businesses and taxpayers. Therefore, we will continue to engage with investors and businesses to build their confidence through consistency of our policies and continuous engagement with them. The target sectors, Mr. Speaker, sir, the 2023-24 uh, budget is more balanced and restrained while it continues to deliver core government services. We are steadfast in our commitment to health, to education, to infrastructure, public security, skills development, poverty alleviation, and welfare. Funds have been allocated to improve our basic infrastructure. We will continue to engage with our multilateral and bilateral development partners to secure funding in the improvement of basic infrastructure, including health and education facilities, roads, jetties, and water supply. A number of projects will be funded by our multilateral development partners vis-a-vis -vis the, vis -vis the ADB, the World Bank, through concessional loans in the vicinity of 150 million US dollars. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, sir, these projects will create employment opportunities and create more investment opportunities. So the Ministry of Health allocation has been increased to improve our health care services and facilities. The ministry has been allocated $453.8 million, which is an increase of $69 million to cater for the efficient operation of our health care facilities. The increase will also cater for salary increment for our health personnel and urgent recruitment of nurses and medical assistance. Mr. Speaker, sir, the education sector has been given the highest allocation of $845 million. This is historically the highest allocation ever. 
The allocation includes grants, salaries, and capital expenditure. We will provide better salaries and working conditions for, for our teachers. Mr. Speaker, sir, in line with our commitment, the government has written off the TELF debt of approximately $650 million owed by 53,725 students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Students and their families, Mr. Speaker, sir, will not have to repay that debt. Instead, give them a children or students who have benefited from that will have to serve a bond by working in Fiji for a certain number of years. Mr. Speaker, sir, we retain social protection allowances for poor households. The allocation has been increased by $11.5 million from the current financial year. Across the board, Mr. Speaker, sir, the social protection allocation has been increased to support those living below the poverty line, and that includes people with disabilities, pensioners, women, and children. The Ministry of Civil Service, Mr. Speaker, sir, I now turn to the, the ministries under my portfolio, one of them, the Civil Service, Within the civil service, there will be more human resource and institutional capacity building to improve service delivery to ordinary people and for the civil servants to be a clear, to give them a clear career path. The civil service is our biggest employer, Mr. Speaker, sir, with a workforce of 35, over 35,000 spread across 31 ministries, 50 departments and agencies at 300 locations throughout the country. For the service, it is not a, it's no longer business as usual. Like other parts of national life, the service too must go through a transition. Our aim is for the entire organization to become world class. If that sounds ambitious, it is ambitious. The ministry is being allocated $50.6 million compared to $2.4 million in the previous budget. The consolidation and the transfer of functions previously carried by the Ministry of Economy to truly reflect the streamlining of the core function of the public service has led to the substantial increase. This includes the transfer of responsibility of Office of Accommodation and Housing Unit of $47.9 million. The intention is that new standards of excellence will be achieved in service delivery. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs allocation has also increased from $29.4 million to $37.9 million, an increase of 28.9 percent. The increase is to support the reopening of our missions in Washington, D.C., Port Moresby, Kuala Lumpur, the establishment of a new embassy in Israel, and the refurbishment of our overseas missions, Mr. Speaker, sir. <coughs> PM's office small grant scheme to honor the former Prime Minister's commitment to rural communities, the small grant scheme allocation has also been increased by $1 million. <coughs> After care fund, Mr. Speaker, sir, this budget provides our ex-servicemen and service women a sum of $14.9 million in the aftercare fund, an increase of $2.49 million, Mr. Speaker, sir, from the 12.4 before. That increase is due to the increase in beneficiaries as well as increased medical and administration costs. Mr. Speaker, sir, we recognize the commitment and sacrifice of our disciplined service men and women. We salute and render our respect to those who have served our country and with honor and with grace. The Department of Public Enterprise, Mr. Speaker, sir, to uh, further improve performance of our public enterprise entities, $8 million has been allocated in the proposed budget, which is an increase of 1.8 
million dollars from the previous year's allocation. Our public enterprises should be making significant contributions to the economy, but there is a long way to go before they can match the output and results in return on investment. Information and national archives, the dissemination of accurate and timely information is critical to the coalition government to ensure that the people of this country are well informed on matters of national interest, on matters of government services and initiative. The department has been allocated $3.2 million, although this is a reduction of 800000 it does not mean that the department will not be able to carry out its core functions. <coughs> Basically, the uh, allocation which was made for COVID, which was uh, employed by the previous government, has now been terminated. On the environment, Mr. Speaker, sir, the total budget allocation is uh, 7.263 million for the fiscal year, an increase of 3.4 million dollars from the previous year. Mr. Speaker, sir, this budget provides for the government's commitment to safeguarding our natural environment and ensuring ecosystem integrity through an integrated, expedient approach, ensuring an equilibrium between sustainable development and economic prosperity. The Climate Change Divi uh, Division, Mr. Speaker, sir, increasing severity and frequency of natural disasters is disproportionately impacting small island development states. The Climate Change Division has been allocated a total of 2.56 million in the uh, financial year, an increase of 1.4 from the previous year's allocation. In addition, 6.5 million is provided by development partners vis-a-vis -vis the European Union, contributing 5 million for the implementation of Climate Change Act 2021 and an additional $1.5 million from the Australian government to support climate finance project implementation. I'd like to uh, assure the nation that the implementation of the budget will be very closely monitored. We will consider the possibility of having a mini budget after six months to ensure better realignment in the preparation for the change in the financial year to normal calendar year. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, we must continue to be mindful of the challenges associated with geopolitical environment, risks associated with climate change, and other headwinds. We must always be conservative in our approach and put in place necessary measures and implement appropriate adaptation and mitigation actions to ensure our resilience. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm confident that the next few days of intense debate and discussions, this August House will finally endorse this budget for the good of the people of Fiji. God bless us, God bless Fiji, and I support the budget. Thank you.